A couple of years ago, I made a Nintendo Switch dock that I modeled after a Game Boy Advance SP. It actually came out really cool and did pretty well on my channel. A few comments on the video suggested that I try and make the buttons on the dock actually work, which honestly were only included to make it look like a Game Boy. While the original design in my previous video wouldn't exactly be fun to hold, I thought of a cool way to make a Game Boy Advance SP inspired handheld Switch dock. First, you'd have to separate the Joy-Cons from the Switch, and have them mounted lower than the screen. Then, we'd have two separate bodies for the screen and the Joy-Cons to mount to independently. They'd be fastened together with two hinges. And one final touch would be to add some type of Switch cartridge storage feature. This would make the Switch feel a bit more nostalgic when playing in handheld mode, but also would make you not have to tilt your neck down as much as normal, making this design not only nostalgic, but also ever so slightly more ergonomic. Let's get started actually designing this concept. My first revision was basic, with a top piece connected to a bottom piece and features that allow the Joy-Cons to slide onto the bottom piece and the switch to slide into the top piece. This was a proof of concept that I printed to ensure that the geometry for the sliding interfaces would work as intended. After I got the fitment working well, I added more features to the model and came up with this final design. You know, only after a few more iterations. Let's take a look at how this new design works. The top piece has slots that receive sliding pieces that first mount into the switch screen where the controllers normally go. And then the switch screen slides into the top piece. I added a cross beam to help the top be a bit more rigid when installing and removing the switch screen. The bottom piece has slots for the Joy-Cons, eight angled pockets to hold the cartridges, and then a nice fancy logo if I do say so myself. On the back, we have contours and pockets to help the switch get out of the top piece, as well as allow the switch to be plugged in and charged while loaded into this assembly. There are two pockets on the back of the bottom piece that I added to let your fingers actually grab around the Joy-Cons and make it a lot more comfortable to play. With the assembly made and the model sized properly, we can load the 3D files into our slicer. I recently got a Bamboo Labs A1 3D printer, so I'm using Bamboo Studio to slice the files. I've been extremely happy with this printer and slicer, and I've been telling anybody interested in 3D printing to consider the Bamboo Labs printers, because honestly, they just work and you don't have to spend hours getting them tuned properly. Anyways, for this print, I'm going to use organic tree supports to allow the print to be supported only from the build plate, and I'm going to use Bamboo Studio's filament color painter to make my logo white and the rest of the part blue to help the logo pop a little bit. When using multiple colors, I use a purge tower which you can see in the back of the slice plate. This purge tower helps purge out filament that's in the hot end to make sure that the mixed color transition from blue to white doesn't appear on the print itself. I realized that in this clip, I didn't record myself slicing and printing those transition pieces that slide into the switch screen and mount into the top piece, but those are easy to slice and they don't need any supports. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. It really goes a long way, especially for smaller channels like mine. I have about 5 more videos in progress for the channel, some having to do with the Steam Deck, some with 3D printing in general, and then some more. If you want to stay tuned and check these out, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. Now that the files are sliced, we can get started printing this design. After about 4 to 5 hours, everything was printed. Which, if I printed it on my Ender 3, it would have taken about 9 to 10 hours. Honestly, I'm not sponsored by Bamboo Labs or anything, I just really love their printers. Anyways, the parts came out pretty clean, and the logo does pop out well with a different color filament. The slots for the game cartridges fit well, but they do fall out if tilted upside down. I didn't want to make them too snug and damage them or anything, so I'm pretty happy with this. The shallow angles that I had on the back of the top piece made the surface look a little bit staggered, but I actually thought that it came out kind of cool. The sliding pieces slide into the switch easily after I sanded them down a little bit. But you have to make sure that you push straight up or down on them when installing or removing them to make sure you don't break the print. If you're somewhat careful, it won't happen, but if you just pull, you could rip the layers apart, which I did when I was being impatient. The Joy-Cons slide into and fit into the bottom very well. I modeled the interfaces by measuring the switch and the Joy-Cons, and then adding a little bit of clearance. And this fitment worked this well only after about three design revisions. These finger pockets on the back made holding this thing a lot more comfortable too, and I'm very happy with how they came out.
And finally, the switch slides in and out of the top piece fairly easily. Again, as long as you're being mindful of pulling straight up or pushing straight down. Now let's connect the pieces together by screwing the hinges in and then load it up with our games. And to do a final playtest, let's load up Tears of the Kingdom. The Zelda games on the Nintendo Switch are pretty easy to pick up and then fall into a month long binge with, so I really shouldn't make any real progress and get hooked back into it. But this final design does feel clean and very fun to play with. I don't have to look down as far as normal, which I was kind of joking about in the beginning of this video, but it really does help relieve my neck a little bit. But the only downside is that it, it does feel a little bit heavier than the normal handheld mode because the main body weight of the Switch is a little bit further from your hands than normal, so you're kind of resisting it at the Joy-Cons. It wasn't heavy enough to make me uncomfortable or anything, but I definitely noticed it. And, like I showed off in the design, a USB-C cable fits in pretty easily and can charge your Switch when it's opened or closed. and the hinges do a really good job of resisting the switch from flying open, unless you give it a pretty good hard shake. The screen comes out and goes back in nice and securely, again, if you make sure you pull straight up or push straight down. Overall, I think this might be one of my favorite designs I've made on this channel. I've actually been playing Super Mario RPG with this for a few weeks now and have definitely been enjoying this new way to play the Switch in handheld mode, although I also am definitely biased. If you want to have one of these, I'm actually going to be selling them on my Etsy page which I'm going to have linked in the description, and you can use code CAS10 for 10% off of your order. This is the first time I'm actually selling a design project that I've been working on, so depending on the popularity of this video, you may need to wait longer than expected, as I'll be making these as they're ordered. Also, I might sell the files so you can 3D print it on your own, and if I do sell the files, they'll be available on my Etsy page, also linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see my future projects, and have a great rest of your day.